this is your official warning before the vlog actually starts that this vlog will contain graphic details that men may not want to listen to. <laughs> Just saying, this is your warning, guys. Hello to all. So as you can tell from the title of this vlog that I'm going to give you guys some info about my upcoming surgery. And as you can see, I'm in scrubs. <laughs> no, I don't work in the medical or veterinarian fields. I've just been cleaning all day, trying to prepare for the fact that I'm not going to be able to clean for a while. And I like to wear scrubs when I clean. Or when I'm doing my mixed media art, I like to wear scrubs too. But anyway, scrubs while cleaning is so comfortable. I mean, everybody should clean in scrubs. I mean, you can get them for, you don't have to spend a lot. You can get them for a very reasonable price at um, thrift stores or secondhand stores. I like these though. They have little, they have little poodles on them and, you know, I'm a big dog person. But anyway, um, and then I had ran out to get run some errands last minute things because I won't be driving for a while and as I was pulling in the driveway I thought oh well wait a minute let me go ahead and take this vlog because I have not done it yet and I need to get it up today and I'm gonna do it outside because inside the house is probably a lot louder than it would be out here but anyway so Surgery is tomorrow, Wednesday, April 5th, 2017, and I am having a hysterectomy. I've had a while to mentally prepare for this, even though I can't say I'm totally prepared, because they have been watching a, well, not a, but some growths in my uterus for a while. And I have several little ones, but then I have a larger one. And that one in the last year has just really grown in size. It's kind of attached itself to the uterus. And actually, the doctor's like, well, your uterus is also growing. It's like as if you were four and a half months pregnant right now. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can definitely tell. Like, if, I'm, if I've ate a big meal, it's really weird because, like, it's like being pregnant. Like... It, the side there's a roundness to when you're pregnant there's like a a roundness to your stomach on the sides it's hard to describe unless you've been pregnant to know what I'm talking about but if I've eaten a lot and my bladder is full boy it feels just like I'm pregnant it is so weird but anyway um, you got, if, if guys, you're still watching, or maybe you younger girls that haven't had kids, or, um, anyway, I gave you the warning at the beginning of this vlog, so we're going, I'm going to go into details, and they're not going to be pleasant details, but I thought people that are going through this, or basically any woman could go through this, I want them to know kind of the details, so here we go. The complications from this, or my symptoms, my quality of life has really gone downhill in the last year. And that is because of the amount of pain and the amount of bleeding that I have been doing. Now, when I, before these growths and everything, you know, when I was younger, I did not have painful, I didn't even have cramps. I would bloat a little bit, but I, I just, I was lucky and I didn't get cramps. And I was like clockwork. I went three days and only three days and it was a very light period. I was definitely one of the lucky ones because honestly, I used to think that, you know, like in high school with girls are like, no, I can't do gym. It's my time of the month and I'm in too much pain and even women, you know, as I got older, and the women were like, oh my God, the pain is horrible. My back hurts. And I'm like, I really thought these women were making it up and just milking it. <laughs> now I know. Um, very painful. I mean, basically contractions. It, it, I mean, I've caught myself just breathing because the pain was so bad. And the lower back pain like you would have in contractions. But the worst part is the amount of blood. Uh, it just, 
And here we go. Okay, this is your last warning. If you do not want to hear grotesque blunt, I'm just putting it out there and I'm telling it like it is. And I'm not going to be embarrassed about it because it's a human body and the human body does things. So here we go. I can get on the toilet and basically pee blood. Now, granted, that's not where it's coming from. I'm not, pee, there's no blood in my pee, but that is what, I mean, get on the toilet and then it just a constant flow as if you were peeing would just constantly come out blood, clots, the things, the clots and stuff and tissue and stuff that I would find at the bottom of the toilet, you know, when I got up to go flush, you look at the toilet before you flush. And the things I saw would make a man pass out. That's all I can say. I, 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 I'm still flabbergasted sometimes. It's just the stuff that came out and the amount of blood. I could use the super tampons and in 15 minutes or before, that thing could be completely full. So I've got tampons. I've got maxi pads. And it's awful. I, I've never been a person to wear pads. I don't like it. And um, they'll be full in no time. I cannot imagine the amount of money I have spent in the last year on, um, you know, sa sanitary feminine products. It just an uh, unbelievable amount of money. And so losing all this blood has affected. I am tired all the time. Even with taking iron, because just, you know, you're thinking, oh, don't want to have anemia because of this, and the extra iron, and it's just, it is fatigue. It's like your body just, to go up a flight of steps is just like, it's so tiring. And that's not like, you know, that's not like me. I've always been athletic and in good shape, and that's not like me. So, um... It is definitely time to have a better quality of life and get. And obviously, she said it's just going to keep growing. It's going to keep growing. So it's it's time to come out. So they are. Um, okay. So here's the other detail. I've had three C sections because I had a pelvic injury in my twenties. So basically, my children just couldn't come out. <laughs> so they had to do C sections. Well, I have a lot of scar tissue. So, most likely, they'll actually have to cut me back up and do another C-section because all of the tissue and everything could have fused together. They're going to check to see if they can do it the regular way and pull it out. Well, not pull, you know, cut, pull, that type of thing, instead of having to cut open my abdomen. They're going to check, but she's like, there's not high hopes. She's like, don't hold your breath. So, basically, another C-section um, I did ask her, and y'all are going to think I'm so gross. Please take pictures of my uterus <laughs> and of the growths inside the uterus because I'm curious. I'm, you know, that's something we can't see, the, ins the inside of our body. And plus, I homeschool my son, and I know some of you are going, what? You're going to show your son those pictures? Well, yeah, we can do a whole study on, you know, the female, female, Oh my gosh, I can't talk. The female anatomy. I mean, this could be a very good health lesson. So hopefully the doctor will come through and take pictures for me. But I would love to hear your stories on, have you had a hysterectomy? What was it like? What was recovery like? Just little things to kind of help me just know what to expect. And I'm hoping that this will basically... You know, I'm going to chronic, I'm going to film, you know, being in the hospital, recovering, everything. And I hope maybe that could put your mind at ease if this is something, you know, if your mother had this and your grandmother had to have a hysterectomy, um, maybe this is something you're going to end up having to have because things like this can run in the family. Now, they don't think this is, um, this should not be cancerous, but of course they will send off the growths to pathology. Um, but I, I just don't have, you know how you just have these gut feelings, these feelings. I don't feel at all that they're cancerous. I, I just don't get that, that feeling. So I'm kind of at ease at that. The doctor giggled at me. I'm telling you people giggled at me because we were talking about recovery and she said, you know, if it is like a C-section, if we end up doing it that way, it could be, you know, five to six weeks recovery. And 
I'm thinking, well, you know, I've had three C-sections and I bounced back pretty fast and it's probably not going to be that long. I I'll be back to myself in no time. And she giggled. The doctor giggled at me <laughs> because she said, when was your last C-section again? And I said, well, 12 and a half years ago. And how old are you? I'm 45. Yeah. 45 year olds don't heal <laughs> as much as they did when they were in their well, well, how old was I? 32? Whatever. How old ever I was when I had my son. Yeah. Um, yeah. They don't heal as quickly. <laughs> so she giggled at me. And I know she does have a point, but we'll see. Um, any questions that you have, please, in comments, d definitely make comments. Because I'm going to be in the hospital and, you know, I may be bored. I don't, well, I won't be bored. I have plenty of books to read. I do have that. But I will have time to answer in length in length questions. I am going to go ahead and um, go inside now and shortly start packing. So I'm going to bring you guys along on what I am taking to the hospital. And I may come up with more details. I can't remember. I do little details. You know, when I get home, I can't lift anything over to um, anything heavier than a gallon of milk. And... Um, up to the week before, I was not able to take any vitamin C or vitamin E and only allowed to take Tylenol for pain, which was funny because I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even own any Tylenol. I always take ibuprofen or Advil or something, but I guess because they're more of a blood thinner maybe. But I was only allowed to take Tylenol, which I did not do. I held off and I just haven't had any type of pain reliever for, oh, Okay, I'm going to cut myself off. Anyway, haven't had any pain relievers for a week now. And the I forgot to mention the um, time. I have bled up to 15 days straight. And I'm really tired of having to wear black pants or very dark gen denim because I was constantly bleeding through. I, I mean, I just... Some of y'all are thinking, oh my gosh, no, no way. But yeah, I went on vacation and in the middle of the night... I had to get up and take the sheets off the bed and go to the bathtub and wash the sheets out because I would have freaked out housekeeping. Let's just say that. They would have thought somebody was murdered in there. It, it was terrible. And this is how bad it is. I'm told you I'm going to be graphic. This is how bad you can bleed. I stood up to get out of the bed. And evidently during the night, I had kicked the pillow off the bed. And when I stood up, now I had, I sleep in like very loose shorts and a t-shirt. When I stood up, blood leaked and dripped down onto that pillow. So I had to wash the pillowcases, that pillowcase too. I had to wash the blood out of that. That is just, it's just an unbelievable amount of blood that makes quality of life. I mean, everything has to be planned. Like, oh my gosh, well, I got to wear this and I got to be able to get to a bathroom really quick. And I've always got to, you know, it got to the point where I was going to the bathroom all the time. Um, and that's the other thing. I've also had to urinate a lot more because my uterus has grown. It's bigger than it normally is. So it's pushing on my bladder and I have to go to the bathroom all the time. Lord, are these details really graphic? And we won't even go into my mental state and how I am very nervous about the anesthesia because last time I didn't do well on anesthesia. And yeah, I, we're not even going to go into that because I'm going to not even go. I'm going to think, try and think positive and I'm not going to hype myself up on that. So anyway, let's go to packing people. I'm just now getting some of my stuff together. I'm actually going to pack my stuff since I don't need a big bag in my Walt Disney World bag. And I just want to say that this is an awesome year. I'm just saying. Okay. 71. So I'm going to take my yoga pants because this is just what I'm actually going to wear in the morning. And then I'll wear it come home in this because... Um, it's very loose around the waist and because of, you know, the possibility of having the abdomen cut open, I need something very uh, big around the waist. I'm taking my yoga pants and um, I'm just going to wear, it's um, baseball season guys and I'm a diehard St. Louis Cardinals fan and so I'm just going to wear this t-shirt with it. I'm definitely going to have my Minnie Mouse socks. I'm going to, you know make the nurses and stuff uh, laugh. I'm not going to wear the hospital socks if I don't have to. And then I'm just going to take my, wear my mini shirt, I mean jacket, because it'll be kind of chilly in the morning. I have to have my back scratcher because um, 
yeah, I just need my back scratcher. I take that all the time. And this is one of the books that a friend gave me. They know I love this author, so I actually couldn't wait and actually have read the first two chapters already. And you guys know how I feel about Paris. And I have all my journaling, my new journal, like my bullet journal that isn't technically going to be a bullet journal, but kind of. I got that and my pens and my colored pencils. And I'm going to bring a clipboard because, I mean, I know you have those trays that come over the bed. But I think sometimes a clipboard may be handy. I've got my reading glasses. I have my Minnie Mouse journal. And I have my son gave me the uh, his Mickey Mouse blanket if I need that. Um, I'm going to bring some really big, loose comfy shorts that I normally wear around the house in hopes that maybe I can put that on you know after the surgery and they've checked me out maybe they'll actually let me wear some shorts and the same with um a top maybe I can uh even though they don't match it doesn't matter I'm gonna be in the hospital uh it, in case I get chilly it's long sleeves and that way maybe they'll let me take the gown off and I have a newspaper clipping that another friend gave me that I didn't have a chance to read yet on um, the predictions of the baseball season. I'm a huge St. Louis Cardinals fan, people. So I'm just starting to get my stuff together. I got to go check out my list. But actually, the main, the first thing I brought out here was my back scratcher so I wouldn't forget it. A few more things for my bag. Um, I'm just going to take this mini straightener because my hair gets so like kinky and curly, especially around my bangs, so that I can straighten my bangs. A little brush, and then shampoo, conditioner, toothbrush, mouthwash, um, just the bare essentials of makeup, some moisturizer, concealer, um, oh, emery board in case I break a fingernail, oh, and dental floss, I have to have dental floss. And so in the morning, all I need to put in here is my toothbrush after I brush my teeth. And then I need to put some video equipment, chargers and stuff, and then I will be all set. Then all I'll have left in the morning is packing my computer so that I can upload and edit. And camera equipment um, for vlogging, the battery. Then Oh, and then in the morning I'll have to get my phone charger. And I think that's all I have to do. So the next time you see me, guys, we'll be in the hospital and until the next page.